have to look very carefully through their cases so that none of them are being a victim of human rights violations. This, I think, is very important. Uh, so far, the, we have not seen any consequences of negative decisions because uh, there has not been any forced uh, deportation back to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Now that they say that again, now four years after the uh, agreement was um, was signed, mm -hmm. uh, it has been a meeting through Norwegian government representatives and uh, Ethiopian government representative who has stated that now we want to do this <laughs> and saying that yes, we would take back our people, as well from the Ethiopian side. Mm. I think that it's very important mm. that the Immigration Appeal Board is looking very carefully on those cases, uh, assuring themselves that nobody that is sent back to Ethiopia will be victims of persecution, victims of uh, being arrested, victim of being tortured, and so on. Because we have to look at the actual situation in Ethiopia. Mm. And Ethiopia is a big country, and mm. it's a, happened a lot there in the last 20 years, mm. but we cannot look aside the fact that the Ethiopian government is violating human rights every day, every single day, more or less. People are arrested because of their points of view, because of their democratic, uh, because they want to change the country to more democratic country, because they are talking about uh, freedom of speech. Your advice for the 800 mm. uh, Ethiopians who are <laughs> mm. uh, in danger and uh, related question, mm. how strong is your organization to defend these mm. 800 Ethiopians and how long are you planning to go? Uh, senior advisor at Norwegian Organization for Asylum Seekers. Thank you for coming. Uh, we will discuss about the memorandum of understanding between the government of the Kingdom of Norway and the government of uh, the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia about the return of asylum, Ethiopian asylum seekers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Polish then uh, return after. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you. And uh, first, I want you to comment on the agreement itself. I will read just a few sentences regarding that the right of all individuals to live and to return to their country of origin is basic human rights in inherited. Inter Atia in Article 13, sub Article 2 of the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and Article 12, sub Article 2 and 4 of the 1996 International Convention on the Civil and Political Rights, the 1951 Geneva Convention, and the 1967 Protocol on the Status of Refugee Comment on it. Uh, the, the memorial of understanding uh, between mm -hmm. the Norwegian government and the Ethiopian government yeah. is uh, one of many uh, return agreements that mm -hmm. we have with different countries around the world. Okay. The purpose of having these so-called MOUs mm -hmm. is that uh, transferring back in, uh, nationals to their home country mm -hmm. uh, in the best possible way. So, the, just to having a return agreement or having a model of understanding with different countries when mm -hmm. it comes to their citizens who do not have a legal stay in Norway, mm -hmm. it's not bad in itself. Okay. Uh, it's quite actually a good thing mm -hmm. because then you have established a couple of practical details how to do this in the best way. Okay. The problem uh, when it comes to some of these return agreements, uh, for example Ethiopia, is when people yeah. that are in, in a way, uh, whether what we think that they are in a risk of being persecuted, for example, yeah. upon return, and making these kind of return agreements with countries who is not democratic countries, yeah. uh, the countries that are um, base, as a violating basic human rights, uh, mm -hmm. that's more problematic. 
So uh, when it comes to this uh, uh, concrete uh, memorial of understanding with Ethiopia, mm. we have been criticizing it since 2012. Okay. The reason for that was that we were afraid of that people who has a need of protection mm -hmm. would be returned back to Ethiopia. So when this uh, agreement came uh, public, mm -hmm. um, then we also saw the need of getting uh, more information about the actual situation for people in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And we saw that many people who are political active uh, for organization or political parties who is fighting for a more democratic country in mm -hmm. Ethiopia, for fighting for fundamental rights as the freedom of speech, freedom of political assembly, mm -hmm. uh, fair elections and so on. Uh, we went to Ethiopia in 2012 and had meetings with many people who gave us very good information about the actual situation. So we made this report 30 months of sunshine, mm -hmm. uh, which also uh, just after uh, we came with our report, uh, Laninfo, mm -hmm. uh, who is also the Norwegian contribution uh, information expert, mm -hmm. changed their earlier uh, report. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. so we think that our report was uh, was mm -hmm. uh, was the reason for that. At least one of the more uh, also one of the oh. one, one of the reasons for they changing it. That led to that we saw that more Ethiopians who have been political active in Norway actually mm. get protection in Norway, which we was very happy for. Uh, that people that maybe stayed in Norway for six, seven, eight years who has been political active now finally get their um, get their refugee status in Norway. And that is said, uh, we have seen now the uh, last years that. Um, it's not so good practice uh, in, in the immigration authorities. But back to the uh, return agreement. Mm. The return agreement that uh, we made in 2012 also had uh, phrases mm. when it comes to so-called forced returns to Ethiopia. Mm. That people without a valid permission to stay in Norway, that they could be taken by force by Norwegian police and deported back to Ethiopia. And that Ethiopia, the, in this agreement, uh, has agreed on to take them back to Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, this agreement has, is now four years old. It came in 2012, but so far, more or less none without a valid travel uh, document. Also, those Ethiopians who have a passport, for example, yeah. the, the Norwegian government is uh, able to uh, send them back to Ethiopia, even if it's not voluntary. But when it comes to forced return, as a deportation back to Ethiopia, even if you have this agreement, we have not seen that they have made it able to do this in practice. So uh, when it comes to the voluntary return, also those who want to go back to Ethiopia, this return agreement has some good points that uh, make it easier for those who think that they can restart their life in uh, Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They can get some money, they can get some um, help when they are back in Ethiopia, which is very positive for those who do not have a protection. Those system. who are who are interested to return. Yeah, those, okay. those who think that they will be safe in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. but maybe stay there for many years because they do not have any economical uh, possibility back in Ethiopia, or those who have stayed in, it, in Norway for many years and lost their hope. There's uh, also many Ethiopians that I sp speak with mm -hmm. say that now I stay there for five years or ten years and say I'm not coming anywhere here in Norway because I do not have the right to stay in Norway. So they think that going back to Ethiopia is a better possibility, a better future uh, for them because they have no rights in Norway. Okay. Uh, mm. uh, which international laws or articles mm. Mm. do you think the agreement uh, violates and also which Norwegian values? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Also, the agreement itself, yeah. also the words on the paper, mm -hmm. uh, we don't think that is violating directly any international convention. Okay. It is the, those, also what we are concerned about yeah. uh, is that when um, people in Norway, uh, also Ethiopians who stayed here in Norway, who has been politically active either in Ethiopia or in Norway, uh, that are in the risk of being persecuted or being uh, uh, 
get their human rights, basic human rights uh, violated in Ethiopia. If they are uh, deported back to Ethiopia, we are concerned about those. So far, the, we have not seen any consequences of negative decisions because there has not been any forced uh, deportation back to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Now that they say that again, now four years after the agreement was um, was signed, mm -hmm. uh, it has been a meeting through Norwegian government representatives and the Ethiopian government representative who has stated that now we want to do this <laughs> and saying that yes, we would take back our people, as are from the Ethiopian side. Mm -hmm. I think that it's very important mm -hmm. that the Immigration Appeal Board is looking very carefully on those cases, uh, assuring themselves that nobody that is sent back to Ethiopia will be victims of persecution, victims of uh, being arrested, victim of being tortured, and so on. Because we have to look at the actual situation in Ethiopia. Mm. And Ethiopia is a big country and it's mm. happened a lot there in the last 20 years, mm. but we cannot l look aside the fact that the Ethiopian government is violating human rights every day, every single day more or less. People are arrested because of their points of view, because of their democratic uh, because they want to change the country to more democratic country because they are talking about uh, freedom of speech mm -hmm. because they're using their fundamental rights to demonstrate against the violation from the government and we have we, we cannot forget that this is also a part of the Ethiopian uh, situation mm -hmm. so those who we are now supposed to send back the Immigration Appeal Board they have to look very carefully through their cases mm -hmm. so that none of them are being a victim of human rights violations. This, I think, is very important. Uh, so far, they have said that there is a lot, around 800 Ethiopians in Norway without a uh, permission to stay in Norway and that those 800 are now in danger of being deported back to Ethiopia. Among those 800, there are people who are in need of international protection. Mm. I have gone through many Ethiopian cases mm. and uh, there are still Ethiopians who I think that are in need of international protection who is not got it from the immigration of people. So from our side, uh, we will uh, continue uh, appealing those cases where we think that the immigration of people has not done a right um, decision in their cases. Uh, so that would be important for us now uh, in the time coming. Thank you very much. Uh, ETO Norway TV and Radio has asked eight questions to the Department of Justice, mm -hmm. Norway's Department of Justice, and they gave us uh, answers. Mm. If you can see it roughly mm. and can comment on it. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. this is uh, political answers, uh, okay. to, to, to put it that way. Uh, okay. Of course, uh, Norway will always say that we do not deport anybody that are in uh, risk of being uh, in Just danger yeah. upon a return to Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And Norway will always say that we are following all our international obligations. Uh, so, I have read it, <laughs> and uh, I, this is a very political uh, answer, and they cannot answer anything different. Okay. And this is, is kind of a way, this is the theory, okay. and there is nothing wrong with the theory. Yeah, so the theory uh, <laughs> but what we are concerned about is, of course, the practice. That, uh, the practice of it, because we think, as I said earlier, that among these 800, which is now in danger of being deported back to Ethiopia, mm. there are people with real risk of being persecuted back in Ethiopia mm. because of their fight for freedom, because of their fight for democracy, mm. because of their journalism, because of that they want to change Ethiopia into a more democratic country. Mm. And those people, mm. we have to single out and say that you need protection. It is our, the Norwegian state, international obligation to give this protection. Mm. Therefore, we are afraid of that if 
And I say if, mm. that we now see that many Ethiopians are trying to be deported back to Ethiopia, that the Immigration Appeal Board make a new consideration of their cases mm. and assuring themselves that Norway is not being violated their international obligation by sending somebody back to persecution. This is the Norwegian state responsibility. Because yeah. what every kind of agreement that you have, mm. the agreement itself can be <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. yeah. As on the words can be perfect, and you can mm. mention the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and you can mention all over of international obligation, but it will not be having any sense if people are sent back to prison, if people are sent back to persecution, to torture then the paper doesn't mean anything because about all kind of agreements that we do with other countries there is our international obligation that is number one hmm. and that we have to take uh, in consideration in all of the cases so this is the task now and this is the important thing now is that we are sure of that those who are planning to be sent back to Ethiopia that, that they get a new treatment of their cases to be sure that none of this will be in danger back in Ethiopia. Very good. Mm. Uh, one of the biggest opposition party leaders, mm. uh, Patriotic Composter Professor uh, mm. Brown, described the Ethiopian government a wounded wild animal. Mm. And the other, mm. uh, the other uh, discrimination, also the new one, mm. sinking ship. Mm. And a wounded uh, wild animal can attack everybody, mm. anything. Mm. Uh, another thing, now there is a very big uh, mass movement in Oromia, mm. in Amara region, which is 75% of the population, mm. and many other places. And I, I want to mention extreme cases, mm. like children mm. was deliberately killed, mm. children. Mm. A child and a man. A pregnant, a pregnant mother was deliberately killed. Mm. Uh, and there was direct shooting of the demonstrators. Mm. And that's exactly what ISIS does mm. to terrorize people. Mm. Your comment and your organization is to start from the situation. We are in Ethiopia. very concerned about the actual situation in Ethiopia these days. Also, since November, December, there has been a demonstration, peaceful demonstration, against the master plan, in, uh, for example, mm -hmm. which has been met by the Ethiopian government by brutal force. Mm -hmm. uh, international organization, which, for example, Human Rights Watch which is very seriously, uh, is uh, reporting about many hundred of demonstration, peaceful demonstration, mm. has been killed. Mm. And that has been killed by military, which is answering words with bullets. Mm. And that is not a democracy. The other things that we also have to look very carefully uh, towards is that uh, the Ethiopian government, when they are trying to say sorry or trying to explain this, is that they always blame the uh, demonstrations. They yeah. blame that those are the terrorists, opposition, the uh, oppositions, uh, that they have connection with, uh, yeah, they yeah. have connection with ULF, or they have yeah. connection with Gimbut 7, yeah. or they have connection with other terrorist parties, and they label everybody that is against them yeah. as terrorists. And then they say, these are terrorists, those are the responsibility, those have the responsibility for the violence, it's not the government, it's those terrorists. Mm -hmm. And then they also use it, not only to use lethal force against the demonstration, but to arrest, to arrest and mm -hmm. to torture other people, mm -hmm. uh, which is, can be in connection with them. So this is actually... I think that uh, the picture uh, that you were using, that like a hurt animal, mm. uh, is a very good picture how it looks in Ethiopia for some of these uh, situations. Because they're shooting first and they're not even asking the question afterwards. And yeah. that's, uh, we have to react on this violence that is happening in Ethiopia today. And uh, this um, situation, 
are not taking in, also they, they should be taking into more consideration mm -hmm. when it's come to also do those who are applied for asylum in Norway. Mm -hmm. Because sending back people now to Norway who has been in contact with Gilbert 7, mm -hmm. or has been in contact with OLF, or mm -hmm. has been fighting for their values, for example, that they want to have a free Oromia, mm -hmm. or that they're fighting for Gilbert 7 demands on uh, elections without uh, also free elections and free speech, they can be targeted when they come back to Ethiopia. And we have not we cannot forget what Haile Mariam said in an interview for for some time ago. Mm -hmm. He said that be aware that none of those who has played with fire as a meaning Gibbot Seven <laughs> or uh, ULF, yeah. they will never be safe in the other streets. We will find you and we will take you whatever the international community is saying. That threat uh, mm. as a, from uh, High yeah, Lion, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, mm. we have to look very carefully. Careful. Yes. Uh, very good. Uh, I want to raise mm. one question here. Mm. I think Norwegian politicians mm. and other Western politicians know the situation. Mm. But they want to focus on the sign instead of the cause. I mean, if there is a cancer case, for example, the mm. sign can be headache and uh, one can take uh, uh, painkiller. Mm. They are focusing on the painkiller, mm. not on the cancer. It would have been down operation or mm. chemotherapy, whatever. Uh, your comment here, because Ethiopia is in a good way towards democracy. Mm. Because there is, a, for one thing, the dictators are few in number. Mm. And they are baseless. Mm. Mm. I, I, I think that we also have to, to look in the eyes that Ethiopia is in a very special situation when it comes to the Horn of Africa. Mm -hmm. If you look at the neighbors to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. uh, then you will see Somalia, you will see Sudan, South Sudan, you will see Eritrea, mm -hmm. also, which is um, in many European and Western countries is looking at Ethiopia as a stabilizing peace factor in their form of Africa. And therefore also their wishes for the Ethiopia to be so. And the way that the former Prime Minister um, Meles mm. has sold their ideas to the Western leaders. Yeah. Uh, making it maybe harder for them to see the other part of Ethiopia, the other side of Ethiopia. Mm. It's kind of, uh, and uh, Ethiopia has two faces. The one face is of this country who has been building up infrastructure, building up hospitals, mm. building up universities, more people is getting uh, clean water, more people is getting health, education, and so on, and also like a peace factor. Mm. That's the one side, of, uh, one side of the face of Ethiopia. The other side, which uh, the Western politics maybe are closing their eyes to, <laughs> yeah. is that at the same time, uh, more and more uh, people that is fighting for democracy is getting arrested, yeah. they're getting tortured, mm. they're getting uh, no uh, human rights. And that part, we are not looking too good into. There should be more criticism uh, from the West and more demands towards Ethiopia when it comes to the human rights violations that is happening in Ethiopia. So, uh, but then again, it's, it's not, um, I think that uh, at least for NUAS, uh, for our organization, which is um, working with uh, men to woman to man as a single cases. It's very important that we have to look at their situation, their individual situation. What will be happen with you upon return? And then we should not be uh, blinded, as the decision makers must not be blinded by the things that is actually working good in Ethiopia. Mm. But they have to also look at those things that is not working. Mm. Thank you. I think Norwegian society as a whole has no a good information about the situation in Ethiopia, mm. particularly in violating human rights. Mm. How can you address or mm. how activists address? Not so only Norwegian politicians, mm. but the big Norwegian mm. society. 
Yeah, and then we are back to this double-faced uh, country that on the one side, as mm -hmm. our, what is showing and promoted uh, is the good side of Ethiopia. And of course, then it's very important for political activists to show the other part, mm -hmm. to document it, to, to, to scream out, mm -hmm. <laughs> as a, look here, what happened to my neighbor, what happened to my uncle, what happened to my brother, mm -hmm. as a, and to show them and to do information towards the Norwegian population. And I agree. How? You do this by what you're doing now, as okay. a, yeah, also by uh, using um, media, mm -hmm. by using the street to demonstration, yeah. to have uh, meetings, uh, for example, at the local library about uh, facts about Ethiopia, also that you have seminars about mm -hmm. the situation in Ethiopia. And uh, that you write letters to the local newspaper and also to the national newspapers about the actual situation today. And also using social media by sharing and spreading the news which they not usually are talked about when it comes to Ethiopia. And I have to, I, I, also the way I know I'm working with Ethiopia, so I see a lot, but I also have to give. Um, um, credit uh, for the Ethiopians in Norway of being political active, of organizing themselves and to fighting for them and trying their best to show also uh, the others living in Norway what is actually the situation in Ethiopia. Yeah. And I think that there has already been done a lot of good work. But we, we cannot give up. <laughs> you have to still fighting and you have to use the possibility that you have when you have in Norway. Because here you have free speech, yeah. here you have free newspapers, yeah. you have free media, you have all these kind of possibilities to scream out <laughs> the injustice mm. that is happening to the people of Ethiopia. Thank you very much. This uh, memorandum of understanding, for uh, particularly to forcefully return 800 Ethiopians mm. asylum seekers from Norway, includes 60 children. Mm. And maybe it will separate also family. Mm. But particularly for the children, <laughs> it's very painful. The, most of them, maybe almost all, can be are born in Norway mm -hmm. and they don't know Ethiopia, they don't speak Ethiopian language, mm -hmm. they are Norwegian. And the problem will be more serious. For example, if one of the families is present in Ethiopia or mm -hmm. tortured, mm -hmm. what will be the fate of these children? And they will be also mocked um, and they can't integrate in Ethiopia. And there is no integrating system in Ethiopia either for newcomers, your comments. We are concerned about the children that is affected on this uh, memorial of understanding and if uh, they are going to start deportation of either themselves or their parents. Uh, 60 of these children, uh, they do not have a valid permission here in Norway and which are in danger of themselves being sent back to mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. But there is also many children, which is not among these numbers, who have one of their parents uh, among these numbers that are in danger of being sent back to Ethiopia. And the consequences of doing that is that we will see family be torn away, as mm -hmm. torn apart. Yeah. Also that uh, maybe the mother or the father have to go back to Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and since they have been illegal in Norway, they can be given a so-called re-entry ban for two years or five years, mm -hmm. and then the, the child would be without either the mother or father for many years. Mm -hmm. and, and that is very, very, very bad for the children. There is this fundamental right of being together with both of your parents. And uh, there has been um, a long fight uh, towards the immigration authorities to accept uh, uh, these kind of uh, cases, but it's very hard. But for those children who have stayed here for more than four years and have one year at school, it's important that they try to retry their case. Mm. Because we have a uh, paragraph which is saying that if you have strong connection to Norway, that uh, they can make a positive decision even if you do not fulfill the other conditions. So for those children who has been who has now in school and stayed there for more than four years, it's important that they retry their cases. So they have to look into and take into consideration the child's best in these cases. Thank you very much. I have one last question. Mm. Um, 
Uh, the first is your advice for the 800 uh, Ethiopians who are uh, mm. uh, in danger and a uh, related question. Mm. How strong is your organization to defend these mm. 800 Ethiopians and how long are you planning to go? For the first question yeah. uh, about those 800, uh, the way that I look at it is that among those 800, there are people who can go back to Ethiopia uh, without any problems. Yeah. Those who are in that situation, they should uh, really look at their possibilities uh, to choose to go back voluntarily. Yeah. I have to, because we have to be very honest about these cases. Yeah. And uh, there are Ethiopians among those 800 that can restart their life in Ethiopia and be better off doing it. But their life will be better off going back to Ethiopia uh, in, uh, by choosing a voluntary return mm -hmm. and with these uh, assets that you get on, on choosing that one. For those who are in danger of uh, being persecuted, because we also think okay, at among this group that there are political activists, journalists, bloggers, others that who are fighting for freedom, that has been political in such a way that the government of Ethiopia will come with a reaction against them. Yes. Either because of what they did in Ethiopia or what they did here in Norway. Yes. Uh, for them it is important uh, that they document yes. uh, what they have been doing and are uh, then, because of this documentation, mm -hmm. either contacting NUAS, their lawyers or uh, themselves, making an uh, appeal against um, the immigration people, showing uh, that this is uh, what I have been doing and this is the consequences of why I have been doing this. So, uh, so my advice for them is that keep fighting, as a, as a, if you are a political activist, for example, uh, in Gilbert 7, mm -hmm. then uh, you can be in danger upon returning to Ethiopia and you should keep fighting on for both for Ethiopians <laughs> and for your own rights. Okay. And then how strong is NUAS? Well, <laughs> that's maybe others to, to, to say something about, but we have seen that in, in several cases that we have been taking up and, and made an appeal that the immigration authorities have changed their decisions. And uh, I think that we are listened to when it comes to uh, our country of origin information report mm. and uh, that we also are listened to but not always agreed with uh, when it comes to both the political as well the parliament uh, and when it comes to also Ministry of Justice and uh, the Director of, uh, of Immigration. But of course we would always like to be stronger and we would always need uh, support. Uh, we are actually a member organization, so there's also a possibility to be a member of our organization. So the more people we are, the stronger we are. Jon Ole, mm -hmm. a senior advisor for the Norwegian Organization for Asylum Seekers. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much and good luck further on to keep on uh, with the good work that you are doing.